Hey there, this is Frank Klesitz with Viral Marketing. And if you're watching this video, uh, you might want to learn a little more about how to zero cost some of your marketing. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. You're going to meet Chip from Syracuse, who's a client at Viral Marketing. And actually, he was the inspiration for uh, much of this course. Uh, you'll hear why he called me up and was motivated to move money from uh, one location to another and needed to raise some financing, if you want to call it that, uh, to start investing kind of some more long term branding. Uh, as opposed to just, you know, kind of buying leads from lead providers. So we're going to talk today about the results Chip is getting, how he's been raising money, how he maybe had to overcome some lim limiting beliefs to pull this off and just kind of go over the whole process so you can learn that. So Chip, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Great. Remember when you called me up and you said, uh, how do I kind of wean myself off of buying leads? And you were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Tell us about that situation you were in. So we're doing about a $5,000 spend on Zillow. And uh, actually it's about a $6,000 spend on Zillow. And I was looking at trying to figure out how I could reduce that instead of spending that much. Uh, my leads, uh, my buyer agents weren't, we weren't seeing the ROI that I wanted to see on that. And instead of fixing the system, the shortest way to, do, to fix that would be to pull back on Zillow. Um, but it's a six month spend. And so I couldn't, I couldn't reduce my Zillow spend fast enough. And I couldn't fix the problem that was going on inside my team fast enough. Uh, so it's, uh, Frank and I started talking about it and let's just figure a way to zero cost that Zillow spend. And I hadn't thought that way before. You hadn't thought that way before. What does that well, mean? But, you know, uh, a wise man seeks counsel. Um, a wise man has many counselors. And so, Frank, you're one of the guys that I go to for, for counsel, for mentoring. Um, yeah, you will, it's, it's for real. Um, so what one of my mentors was saying, you got to recruit, recruit, recruit. And we, we had, and so I ended up firing, firing, firing. And we were at a net zero for with the recruiting and the firing. And I still had all these Zillow leads. And so after having a good conversation with you, I think it was you and John, and we, we were talking about this and look, let's just try to zero, zero cost this. Other people have talked about zero costing it. And yeah, it's easy. Just go get some guys to give you some money. I'll give you leads and give me money. I'll give you leads. You give me money. Well, if you don't give them enough leads, they leave. So there's gotta be stickiness there besides just, I'm going to give you leads. Don't worry about this. I'll give you leads. Give me money. Um, first of all, in real estate, we don't ask anybody for money. Once we, once we list a house, the commission's already part of that. So you don't have to go there and say, Hey, Remember when I sold your house, you owe me $3,000 or you owe me $30,000. We never do that. The company just sends the bill through the attorneys and, and we, we're, we're not money askers. And when you, when you help somebody buy a house, it just comes to you too at the closing table. So to go to people and say, hey, I'm going to give you so many leads and I want to grow my business. If I grow my business by you giving me more money, I can give you more leads. So give me more money. Well, that's not a conversation that most realtors have on a daily basis. We're all salespeople, but we're not there to ask for money on a usual basis. So Frank, you were talking about, there's gotta be a better way to, to put this, uh, this program together and let's do this. Let's call it a uh, business ambassador or we call it the business sponsor project now. Yeah, we started off with ambassadorships and then the business sponsor, it's a lot easier, it's cleaner, people understand it a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. So, I proposed the idea that we could go to a bunch of local businesses and in return for providing them exposure to your database through your video blog, I may be including them in some of your videos, putting them in your emails, including offers about them to your list of all these buyers and homeowners and all these people that live in Syracuse that they don't have. They don't have an audience like that. They probably don't have a database like that. Um, you could bring value to them in addition 
to bringing them all together once a month for a little mastermind, which you've been to many of ours to understand how those work. Right. Right. That was what was proposed. Tell me some of your initial fears or challenges because we'll get to your results. I mean, you've actually have raised money. So you have success through this, but tell me some of the, Oh my goodness, this is, this is very, it really challenged your way of thinking, didn't it? Well, let's go with, let's start with why not to do it. Um, uh, what, what held me back? So, um, I mean, Chris Waters had this great idea, this great plan. And if you just follow it, uh, with this whole program that we, we put together, if you follow it, it actually works. Um, but the monkey on your back just tells you, well, what, what if you throw a mastermind and nobody shows or worse, one guy shows and then you're sitting there and you're just helping this one guy. Well, at least you're helping that one guy. The other thing is, well, if I throw a mastermind, I don't have anything to offer. So those two thoughts will hold you back all the time. If you're involved with viral marketing, if you're invo involved with any of these other marketing groups, do you mind me saying a couple of them? Yeah, sure. Okay. If you're involved with rate, if you're involved with viral marketing and you're on their Facebook pages, there are so many marketing ideas out there. The average contractor doesn't think of any of these ideas. The average contractor, the average plumber, uh, CPA, roofing guy, uh, uh, landscape, uh, landscape guy. Um, they don't think the way we do from these different marketing platforms and private groups that we all belong to. So there's so much more that we can add, uh, so much more value we can add to them. Um, I invited uh, an HVAC guy, a contractor, a flooring guy, a landscape guy, a CPA, and um, a stager to, to my first mastermind. They all showed. Good. Uh, first of all, I was really surprised that they all showed. Um, and I did it at a, at a club that I belong to. And so uh, the CPA sat down and he, I asked him all four, four or five questions. What do you do? Why'd you get into it? What do you, what, what does the market do that gets them in trouble and how do you solve that? The CPA guy, you know, we're all sitting around thinking, what's a CPA guy really going to give us? Well, he gave us why he got into business and what he does for business and what do people do from a CPA point of view? What do they do that they, they don't plan? And what does he do? He, he helps them plan. So, you know, you've got expenses coming up. And all of a sudden you get hit by these expenses and, and he helps them plan and be ready for those expenses throughout the year. My CPA, I see my CPA once, maybe twice a year, uh, once my, for my personal taxes and once for my, uh, business taxes, mm -hmm. there's no planning at all. The HVAC guy goes, my God, my CPA doesn't ever do anything for me. If you help me plan, I've got to buy three trucks. He goes, okay, if you're going to buy three trucks, you got to do this, this. So immediately the CPA has an HVAC guy as a client. You, so you got them talking to each other, didn't you? So I, I, and I, and I this shut isn't up. like you doing a seminar. Absolutely not. I shut up. I let the CPA guy take over and help the HVAC guy. And then the, the flooring contractor guy's got, a, he's trying to do this big commercial project. He has no clue how to start. The CPA guy goes, this is what you got to do. You got to go for, and boom, another, another contract uh, for, for the CPA. And so this, this whole thing just started. Uh, I mean, it worked so well that the flooring contractor said, I did not want to come to this. I didn't have an hour and a half or an hour out of my day uh, to, to do this, but because ship does business with me, and it was at this nice place. I, I wanted to give Chip the courtesy of showing up. I was going to leave early. You didn't hold of the Denny's, Chip? No. <laughs> Perkins, Denny's, no. So anyway, so he didn't want to show up. And the meeting, what, at, at, it went from 8 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock in the morning. And at 9 o'clock, I said, guys, uh, we got one, one and a half more people to go. 
uh, does anybody want to stay or anybody have to leave? Everybody stayed. And he said, listen, Chip, I owe you an apology. I was, I came in here with the wrong attitude. I was just going to show up. I got more out of this one meeting. I can't wait for the next meeting. Yeah. Um, so all of all five of them agreed that they're going to be there this month and bring um, a friend. they're all going to bring one person. There now what I've got to do is harp on them and say, who are you bringing? Who are you bringing? Who are you bringing? And because it's not easy to find one person to come to this meeting, but they all have their homework and I'm giving them keys as to how to get that one more person to show up. Um, I'm not just harping on them. I'm giving them advice. Um, every time I'm calling them, I'm asking about something that happened in, from, from our notes is something that happened at the meeting that they said they had to work on. Yeah. Um, and the landscape guy has four new accounts because of that, just that meeting, the HVAC guy, two new accounts, the CPA, I think, uh, two or three new accounts from that meeting. So the goal is not to get more leads and more accounts out of it, out of the mastermind. The goal is to help us do better at our business. And if by helping us get better at our business, we get more leads and more, more accounts, that's the, that's a side benefit to that. But they're all on board. Now the, the trick is, calling them up and asking them for money to be a part well, of this. Not yet. So Chip, you actually went through the test course where I kind of wanted to put together the, the, the model for the material for this. Right. We, we, here's all the different businesses that we figured you could find somebody in your marketplace that would uh, probably benefit from being aligned with you. Right. Yep. So you would ask the people that came to your first mind mastermind for referrals to maybe some of these different business owners that they know. Because wouldn't it be great if you had one person every month showing up in a giant mastermind room like this to do a meeting or something to that effect, right? Right. So the next step after you get them to your mastermind where that's going to bring value and share ideas is you want to get, you want to include them in some of your marketing. So you've, you've, you've successfully achieved objective number one is start your local business owner mastermind. You built your ideal industry list. You made a list of people you know, maybe some people you don't know. You held your first mastermind. You sent your invitations out. They showed up. Great. Now, what we want to do is interview those people for your video blog. We want to interview the CPA. We want to interview, uh, you said the, the roofing, is that right? The roofing guy? Uh, HVAC. HVAC, I'm sorry. HVAC person, right? Yep. Write them, a little, write them a little recommendation, a letter of recommendation. Include an offer about them on your website and then send an offer about them to your list. You know, about, because the mission of your blog in Syracuse is not just about real estate, it's about to connect the community. Right. Right. So we've and, got, we've, we've got two of those scheduled for this week. Great. Yeah. And how are you going to interview them? In person. Good, just with a camera in front of you? In my office, in person. Perfect. Wonderful. Yep. Good. Yep. Yep. And then what we're going to do is put that up on your blog, put an offer, send that to your list, and hopefully that generates them some response in many respects. We'll see what that happens. Now, well, what's interesting is the HVAC guy has a social media company that he pays to do all this stuff for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. And, and so we're going to be, he's going to be on my social media platform and we're going to be on his social media platform. Yep. We're going to join together. That's and viral marketing, my friend. That's viral it, marketing. It is. That's all there is to it. Absolutely. It is. It's how do you get access to their database? You know, and through all this value you're going to create, if you do an interview with them, they can share it with their list too. Right. Does this like open your mind to like how to get access, like in a whole different way of thinking? You know? It's so, no, it doesn't open my mind to it what it does is open my mind as to how to do it because I knew it's there and I see other industries doing it. I see other people doing it. Mm -hmm. And what, my goal was to find an influencer that's out there and how do I get into their database as well as having them in my database? Because having an influencer 
go to my database gives me more credibility. Having me go into their database obviously gives me reach, but it also gives me credibility within their database. How do you go about doing that besides just going there and saying, hey, uh, can I be a part of you? Can you know, get it on your knees and, and begging to be a part of that. That's not what I want to do. And I don't want to pay them. I want them to see me being that. And this mastermind process really got it going. That's great. So here's the goal. We're going to start with, you start your local business owner mastermind. It's a very simple way to start building relationships with local business owners. So you're not going out right away and trying to sell them something cold, right? So it starts with the mastermind. You invite them in and you do exactly what you did, Chip. And you hopefully ask them to invite friends. You can also reach out cold to other people to join your mastermind, but it really is going to be mostly referral driven. And you have your list of target industries that could benefit from a home is sold. Right. Once you hold your mastermind, the next goal is to say, hey guys, not only I hope you enjoyed this mastermind, but you know, I run, let's say the Silicon, or not the Silicon, the uh, Syracuse, very different from Silicon Valley, the Syracuse Real Estate Journal, <laughs> right? The Syracuse Real Estate Journal, where we talk about things real estate and better connect community. I would love to interview you about your business, about some of the problems you solve. And let me send it out to my list. Let me put it on my Facebook. I'll call it a little offer. And maybe I could drive some business for you. Would you guys be interested in that? I mean, who's going to turn that down, right? So... One of the goals that I have, and Frank, you and I haven't talked about this, but once I get this business platform to uh, 12 or 14 people, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're now making six to $7,000 a month, we're making $2,500 a month on this platform right now. That's great. Um, what, uh, we're, we're, we've got a scheduled meeting with the mayor of Syracuse. And I want to ask him, what are the top three things that Syracuse needs to know about Syracuse? And by the way, when you, when you interview, when you do the interview with us, this is going to go out to this whole network and it's a Syracuse centric net network. And, uh, we, we put it all together and there's, there's like 110,000 people that are the, just the five of us. The five of us have a network of about a hundred, uh, 110,000. I mean, the CPA has 700 corporate clients and 300, uh, individual clients. And within that there's within his corporate. So he has the ability to reach all those. Yeah, and those clients are business owners. And if we, if I do an interview with the mayor and it goes out to all these, this whole database, it helps everybody in the database. It helps the mayor. So this, this platform can get uh, used on multitude of levels. Yeah. This is great. All right. So let's move on. So you start the mastermind, you include them in your marketing, right? Just by interviewing them and you already have the viral engine running that. So that's not incredibly difficult. And then it comes time for asking for the money. So you brought a lot of value and it, this is interesting. You know, you're a salesperson that's never had to ask for money, Chip. It's true. I never thought about that. You know, yeah. you're in viral marketing. I got to get you on the phone and I got to convince you to pull out your credit card and pay something. Whereas in real estate, that's not really true. The money just kind of appears from equity on a closing statement. Well, there's a commission objection that we all have to go through, mm -hmm. but you're really not asking for money. You're asking for a percentage. Correct. So we, we could do it. We could do this based on a percentage. So like a roofing company, listen, every roofing deal I want to, I want you to pay me a certain, but then it's all lead centric. And this is not supposed to be lead centric. This is supposed to be. I include you in the marketing. I give you exposure. We do a mastermind and hopefully there's some leads there, which right. there should be, but it's not like the only thing. So what we know from all the marketing we do, when we do an expired call or a cold call, a very high percentage of the time people say, Oh, well, yeah, we know you guys, we hear about you. You're the guy I hear about all the time. Yes. And that makes that expired call, the for sale by owner call so much easier from a social media platform, from a radio and television platform. So we don't get the, who are you? How much business have you done? How long have you been in business? We don't get any of that. So we can help the HVAC guy. Oh yeah, we've heard about you. We see you all the time. We see you on social media. We, see, we hear about you from this platform and that platform. 
So we're giving him that exposure. So when he makes that first call into the client saying, Hey, I understand you need some help or uh, whatever. He's got that name recognition already. That's great. So let's get to asking for the money. So you brought this value. People want to be the exclusive person in your mastermind. They want to be the exclusive provider you recommend. You're building your own local Angie's list in many respects. Absolutely. Chips list. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, you have to ask for money. So pretty much besides maybe mortgage, uh, everyone's somewhere probably in the range of 250 to 1000 is what you ask for for each person. That's right. And you have to deliver a sponsorship presentation, which we, which we help craft for you in this. You want to keep it compliant, set the billing. Why don't you maybe share, you've raised $2,500 a month. That's, That's right. pretty incredible, man. Like that can change people's lives when it comes to, you know, whether I pay the mortgage or keep my marketing going and I'm going to stop the marketing and then the whole entity stops going. Right. You know, I know some of the people for the examples I shared here, like, oh, so-and-so gets $30,000 a month or so-and-so gets $10,000 a month. And you raise like a puny 2,500 and feel insignificant, but that's not insignificant amounts of money. You no, know, it's not. No, it's, it, not. It, 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 <laughs> it's pretty yeah. significant. So why don't you tell me how you raise the money and tell me what that money has done for you. Like give me the whole, like the benefits of that cash of how it's helping your business. So first talk about how you actually got it. Well, we, we, uh, Frank, we started up upside down on this. Uh, that one of the first classes that we did. So I don't know from an editing point of view, I don't know. Well, no. Well, I did a, I did a test course you were a part of and like, right. What Chris Waters did, who we modeled this after, he just went out cold to businesses and asked for money because he's crazy. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I did too. I, yeah, you, I, I did the same thing. Yeah. And, and, and that's how I got the $2,500. Yeah, um, you know, the, the car dealership, he's never going to show up for one of these. I mean, he's in Florida, so he's never yeah, going to show up for, for one of these. You got money from, Chip, who gets money from a car dealership? Someone just listened to that and said, you got what? You got money from a car dealership? Absolutely. Because um, <laughs> here's, here's a stat. 80% of everybody who buys or sells a house is going to be buying, sorry, I back up. 20% of everybody who's going to be buying or selling a house is going to be buying a car in the next 12 months. 20%. So if you sell a hundred houses, 20 people are going to be buying a car. Doesn't that car dealer want that, that 20, those 20 people or that 20%? Absolutely. So he's paying me $500 a month and he's giving my clients $500 off any car they buy. Like at the very end of the negotiation. At the end of the price. negotiation. Here's another beat me down on price. You beat me down on price. Oh, here's a coupon for $500 additional off that car that you just <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I like okay. it. Okay. So he wants that business because it's all about, it's not about the dollars that he makes on that. It's about getting a client and he's going to keep that client for at least six more cars. He's hoping. And the service. Uh, and serves. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So. That was the first $500. And by the way, that call, I said, hey, Charlie, would you think of doing this? He goes, I'm in. I go, okay, because I can do this for you. He goes, Chip, I'm in. Okay. He doesn't want to be closed anymore. Done. Charlie, you know, I'm going to send you the form and uh, you're going to get all, you'll see on this form what we're going to do for you. Because Chip, I just want part of your database. I'm in. Yeah. That was easy. The stager was a lot more difficult. Well, what are you going to do? Well, we did a video with her at one of her stagings and we showed the value that she does to her clients and she'd never been on Facebook before. Uh, she, she didn't even know how to get onto Facebook. There are people out there that are in business that don't know how to do any of this marketing. And so we can be that expert to those people. And I mean, plumbers, uh, the Mark Lauren plumbing, he just doesn't know how to do all this media stuff. So we're doing it for him right now. We did a video of him <laughs> in a bathroom saying, what is the one thing that people don't do? And he did it. And all of a sudden he's like, Chip, all these people know who I am at the gym now. They never knew that I did plumbing before. And so all of a sudden, everybody knows they're coming to me with, with their plumbing questions at the gym. Mm -hmm. 
So we're able to affect people's business. And so we got $250 a month from the plumber. That's significant. Plumber probably doesn't have that much cash. He's his own guy, right? Yeah. And he sees value of being in the mastermind, learn business ideas. He sees value of participating in the marketing with you. We're the only marketing he does. Look at that. And it doesn't take any more time for you to deliver on that marketing. You're just including them in one of your videos. That's right. Because we handle all the rest of the back end. Right. It's great. No, we, again, he's paying me 250 and we haven't done the video yet. We haven't, we haven't produced it. We haven't edited it and sent it out yet. But, but uh, we, we did a clip that I didn't do through you. We did it through Instagram. And that's where everybody saw it. Cool. So we haven't even done a professional view of it yet. What would you say to a real estate professional that has been selling business to consumer where they've been prospecting, prospecting, go on the appointment, get the listing contract signed, how many deals, how many appointments, cold call, cold call, you found that kind of culture, maybe, of B2C selling? Okay, yeah. just follow, you know where I'm going with this. That culture of B2C selling, where you now had to kind of switch more toward a B2B selling to business owners. Yeah. Tell me about that switch and the approach, the, the mindset shift or the philosophical switch of how you sell to other business owners. Maybe you can't necessarily take a hardcore B2C selling stance on that, I don't think. So in real estate, if they are just looking to sell their house, they just want the most professional person with the best marketing plan and uh, someone who's going to be a good communicator with them. And if you've got that reputation, it should be a real easy sale. If you're new to the industry, it's much more difficult. In B2B, it's not about that at all. It's about what type of relationship are we going to create and how am I going to benefit from this relationship? So you've got to be clear that you're going to grow your business X percent more, which is going to generate X percent more leads, which you can share that business with them. And you've got this exposure and you can add that exposure to their current marketing platform. If they have no marketing platform, it's a no brainer because I mean, our emails that we have with viral marketing, I think we have 11,000 or 13,000 people that we send our email out to locally in Syracuse. If I can say that I'm going to get an email into 11,000 or 13,000 people's email locally, and we're going to push you out on our Facebook and our, our YouTube, and we're going to do a $25 spend over yeah, in Syracuse, $25 spend gets me 20,000 views. Um, so if we can get 20,000 views on, of you out there, they love that. So it's a B2B relationship that is, what are you going to do that's going to generate more business for me? And you just got to be clear on that. Did I answer your question? I think people are going to have to go out there and do it and understand it's not a one-call close. It's much more relationship-driven that I just want to do business with you, Chip then more of the deliverables. Remember in the class, we would put together these big, giant, long contracts of like these different levels. Yeah, I'm sitting here like, oh my God, because <laughs> yeah. we're trying to figure out how to do it. Do you follow me? Yeah. yeah. Or and, we, and I was like, I, this is going to be sold pretty much on your reputation and people just liking you out of the mastermind because they don't really understand it. I was telling the story of how when I started viral, like the first hundred clients that signed up had no idea what we did. I'd send them to my business partner. I'm like, Frank, I don't even know what you do. I'm like, yeah, I just like what Frank is and I'm in. <laughs> you know? So there, there's, a lot, there's a lot of that in the B2B selling space. I just want to share that with you that um, it is more relationship driven. It might, you have to make change your behavior style uh, and your approach when doing this. Definitely. What would you say to someone to be successful at this? Another agent that was in your shoes, freaking out about money. And they're going to go, I think I need to do this to hedge my risk and to get some monthly results. Oh, uh, uh, let me step back. What has the $2,500 a month allowed you to do now that you couldn't before? Sleep at night. Um, literally, I'm waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I understand $2,500 is not a lot of money. But well, this is all relative. It is a lot of money. I just threw out, you were in a class of people making lots and lots of money. Relatively, it feels like not a lot of money. 
but I mean, there's, there's just, one of us, and, and can, let me just say Matt O'Neill. Matt O'Neill gets, t at the start of this class, he was already getting like $5,000. Yeah. But by like week four, he was getting an additional $10,000. And you know, $2,500 is a month of someone's pay at viral entry level. Yeah. Well, 20, for, for me, $2,500, uh, that's half my, my Zillow spend. Yeah. If I can zero out my Zillow spend, now I don't have to wake up at night going, holy crap, these guys have me over a barrel. What do I do? Um, and then if I, if I double that, to 5,000, uh, if I double that to uh, 10,000, which I know I can do. Um, and I'm adding probably about three to four hours in reality, three to four hours of work to me a month to get 10 to say $10,000. Well, I spend way more money or way more time on a listing that's going to get me $10,000 worth of commission than $4,000. So if, if all that I got to do every month, yeah, it's, it's, it's continual. It's perpetual. If I can keep doing this and have $120,000 a year for like 40 hours worth of work, well, that's a lot easier than doing that all on my listings. And by the way, that money generates not just, is helping me with zero costing. It's also generating me more business and more leads coming in uh, to the point that you know, maybe you do reduce your Zillow spend or maybe you, maybe you increase your Zillow spend. It depends on what it gives you the ability to make your decisions a lot differently instead of, Oh my God, I got to just get rid of my Zillow spend mm -hmm. or my marketing spend. Now I've got decisions I got to make. Do I increase it over here? Or what do I do over there? Now I've got the ability to have those decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You said you can sleep better at night. Why? Go a little bit deeper on that. Because literally I was stressing about money. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, man. Cool. All right, so somebody wants to do this. They're selling real estate. What advice do you have for them to pull this off successfully? Don't wait. Um, if... If Frank hadn't have said, Let, let's, we're going to start this team. Uh, we're going to put together this platform. We're going to do this experiment and it's going to start in three weeks. And if he hadn't have said it's going to start in three weeks, it, I would have been okay if it started in three months or in nine months. And I would have probably have had to tr totally change my marketing and it would have been too late. Uh, so instead, Frank said, look, it's going to start in three weeks. So let's get going and, and be ready for it. I've got these people and, and it just started. So if now it's up to us as individuals to start the process and not let it die after you start the course and you finish the course, you got to keep doing it. So you got to see the benefit from it so that you do keep doing it. Or are you going to sit on the sidelines and not take action? Um, I think most, most of us, the reason why we're involved with viral marketing, the reason why we're involved with these different organizations is because we're action oriented people. This is one of those things that you gotta take action on. Cool, Chip, thanks so much for your advice. I appreciate interviewing you. Thanks a lot. It's great talking to you.